In the wake of Starship Flight 4's success, SpaceX is wasting no time preparing for its next flight test, targeted no earlier than July. Elon Musk has provided intriguing updates on Flight 5, highlighting the significant changes SpaceX plans to implement based on lessons learned from Flight 4. Concurrently, the construction of the second launch tower has reached a critical milestone in the past week, and new updates from the FAA regarding Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center are also making headlines. Join us as we delve into these latest developments and much more. Starship Flight 4 was deemed a success, despite Ship 28 encountering anomalies during its atmospheric re-entry phase. As per Elon Musk, the Booster 11 landing was on target in the Gulf of Mexico, while Ship 29's landing in the Indian Ocean was several kilometers off target due to flap damage. He added that, just like the right forward flap, the left one also got very hot during re-entry, but was less damaged. The rear flaps appeared to be in good condition based on their control authority, though some tiles might have been lost. The flap damage was actually expected, and Musk predicted that a day before the launch in an interview with Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. The hinge area and the hinge gap, yep. um, and sealing that hinge gap and not having uh, hot gas just um, go flowing super fast through, through the... the interface there? Yeah, through, well, at, at, at where, where the flap hinge is. Yep. Because um, if, if, if you get hot gas flowing through rapidly, that, that'll cook anything, yep. including the tiles. So, so you've, got, you've got a block, we've got a, a hot gas seal um, at the, the forward and rear flap hinge. And um, so, you know, one of the key questions is, does that seal work? Right. Uh, we think it'll work, but it may not work. Musk added that the next generation of Starship spacecraft, also known as Starship V2, has the forward flaps shifted leeward and further forward to improve the moment arm and to help improve reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload to orbit. During a live stream on X, Musk revealed that the entire heat shield on Starship 30 will be replaced with new tiles that are twice as strong as the previous ones. A layer of silicon carbide ablative material will be added underneath the tiles as a secondary heat shield, ensuring that even if the tiles crack or come loose, the ship remains protected from heat. The silicon carbide ablative material was actually tested during Flight 4 by replacing one of Ship 29's tiles to evaluate its performance during atmospheric re-entry. At the Starbase build site, teams have already started removing tiles from Ship 30 inside the high bay. The new stronger tiles will be installed very soon. Moreover, SpaceX will need to find a way to reinforce the flap areas for future flights to prevent the flaps from getting destroyed due to extreme conditions during re-entry, such as heating and mechanical stresses. The next flight test will also feature the first ever attempt to catch the Super Heavy Booster with the launch tower arms. Booster 11's accurate landing during Flight 4 has given SpaceX the confidence to attempt this maneuver on the next flight. Musk mentioned that there is a 50% chance of a successful booster catch during Flight 5. If the booster fails to target the tower or encounters issues that prevent a tower catch, SpaceX will redirect it for an ocean landing, similar to Flight 4. As of now, we don't have an official explanation for why two of the booster engines failed during liftoff and landing. SpaceX must determine the cause and address the issue before proceeding with the next launch, targeted as early as July. The mission trajectory for Flight 5 is expected to be similar to that of Flight 4, though official confirmation is still pending. Notably, SpaceX skipped the Raptor engine in space relight test during Flight 3 in March because Ship 28 lost attitude control during the coast phase and began spinning uncontrollably. In contrast, Ship 29 remained stable throughout its coast phase in Flight 4, marking a significant improvement expected to continue in Flight 5. Furthermore, Ship 30 will feature additional reaction control thrusters to stabilize the vehicle in flight, potentially allowing SpaceX to perform the Raptor relight test during Flight 5. Additionally, Ship 30's payload bay door has already been removed, suggesting that the upcoming flight test might involve deploying Starlink satellites into space. However, official confirmation regarding the Raptor relight test and Starlink deployment is still awaited. As the Flight 4 launch, ascent, re-entry, and landing sequences went as planned, the FAA has determined that no mishap investigation is necessary before approving Flight 5. This will expedite the licensing process for Flight 5. The FAA has noted in the Flight 4 license that they have approved the mission profile and SpaceX can continue to launch several flights under that license without needing further authorization, provided they adhere to the exact mission profiles and avoid failures other than during re-entry and landing. Nevertheless, the proposed Raptor relight test, Starlink deployment, and tower catch plans will necessitate obtaining a new launch license. The launch site and launch pad infrastructure sustained no significant damage from the powerful liftoff of Starship Flight 4.
Visible charring on the launch mount is consistent with previous launches, and the overall condition of the structure remains satisfactory. Post-launch inspections by the SpaceX team focused on the booster quick disconnect mechanism, assessing whether it required any repairs or adjustments. As usual, all 20 booster hold-down clamps were removed from the launch mount following the flight test, and new clamps will be installed in the coming days. These clamps provide a stable and secure anchoring mechanism for the booster during the initial stages of launch preparation and hold the rocket firmly until liftoff. The necessity of replacing these clamps after each launch remains unclear, but it is a routine part of SpaceX's post-launch procedures. As with previous launches, the tower arms are undergoing minor repairs and fixes following the successful completion of Flight 4. These routine adjustments ensure that the arms remain in optimal condition for handling starships and boosters. The water deluge system steel plates survived the launch as before, with no major damage visible. The deluge system was tested on June 10 to ensure its functionality. The system appears to have performed without any issues. The ship quick disconnect mechanism, which allows the flow of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the ship, incurred some minor damages, just like in the previous flight tests. I think SpaceX needs to increase the speed of the arm retraction to prevent damage during upcoming launches. The tank farm infrastructure emerged mostly unharmed from the Flight 4 launch. Overall, the launch pad infrastructure remains in good condition and is expected to be ready for upcoming tests and launches without any significant delay. The second launch pad construction is progressing rapidly at the launch site. Piling works for Tower 2 were successfully completed three weeks ago, followed promptly by the installation of rebar to reinforce the structure. Steel embeds, crucial for anchoring future structural components of the launch tower, were then placed. The pile cap concrete works commenced next. A pile cap is basically a large concrete slab that rests atop the piles in rebar, distributing the structural loads evenly among the piles. The concrete work for the pile cap was efficiently executed using four concrete pumps over a 14-hour period. Looking ahead, construction of the tower base is next on the agenda. This base will serve as the foundation upon which the tower sections will be assembled. Already, parts of the tower base and essential construction equipment have started arriving at the launch site. Tower 2 Foundation will utilize hollow steel columns filled with concrete rather than concrete that needs steel shielding added. Components for the crane, pivotal for stacking the tower sections, have begun to make their way to Starbase. SpaceX will employ a Demag CC8801 crane which boasts greater lifting capacity compared to the Liebherr LR11350 crane used for the first tower. This crane is slated to remain operational at Starbase until January 2025, supporting extensive construction activities in the interim. Once the base structure is completed, the tower sections currently stored at the Sanchez site will be transported to the launch site. The crane will then stack those sections one above the other to finalize the tower. The final two sections of the tower, along with the tower arms carriage and arms themselves, have departed from Kennedy Space Center and are expected to arrive at the port of Brownsville on the 23rd. From there, they will be transported to the Sanchez site for storage until Tower 2 construction commences. Tower 2 is projected to reach a height of 172 meters, significantly taller than the current launch tower, which stands at 146 meters. This increased height is essential to accommodate the evolving configurations of the Starship and booster, which are anticipated to reach between 140 and 150 meters when fully stacked for launch. Starship 26 has returned to the build site after successfully completing a static fire test at the new flame trench, located at Massey's. The test, conducted on June 3, demonstrated the effectiveness of the flame trench and water-cooled flame deflector, officially commissioning the new test stand. All future Starship static fire tests will now take place at this location, enabling SpaceX to conduct longer and more powerful tests, compared to those conducted at the launch site. Meanwhile, preparations for the next phase of Starship development are underway, with Super Heavy Booster 15 ring sections transitioning into the Mega Bay from the Star Factory. The stacking of Booster 15 will soon commence inside the Mega Bay. As per current developments, Booster 15 will be the first booster to launch with the taller and more advanced second-generation Starship prototype. According to SpaceX graphics, the new booster will stand 1.3 meters taller than its predecessor and will feature a redesigned hot stage ring. During Flight 4, the hot stage ring was jettisoned after stage separation as a temporary solution to reduce the weight of Booster 11 so that a much more precise and controlled landing could be achieved. Future booster iterations will feature an integrated lightweight hot stage ring that will not need to be jettisoned. This SpaceX graphics shows the possible design of the new hot stage ring. 
One of the forward flaps of that second-generation Starship, which will be launched atop Booster 15, was delivered to Starbase last month. Although the flap's design details are obscured in the images, SpaceX's official graphics indicate that Starship V2 flaps will feature significant improvements over V1 flaps. Also, as mentioned earlier, the flap's location will be shifted leeward and further forward to improve the moment arm and enhance control during re-entry. If you're curious to learn more about the next generation of Starship launch vehicles, be sure to check out the links in the description for my previous videos exploring them in detail. The FAA recently released the Environmental Impact Statement for Starship Operations at Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A. The report outlines new details about Starships and Super Heavy Boosters. The report reveals that future iterations of the Super Heavy Booster will boast 35 Raptor engines, while Starships themselves will be equipped with 9 engines. Up to 44 Starship launches per year from Pad 39A are in the plans, with landings permitted both at the pad and on drone ships. Moreover, a dedicated catch tower, which will be constructed further to the south of the existing launch tower, will be used for catching returning ships and boosters. By separating the launch and landing areas, SpaceX aims to optimize turnaround times, allowing for swift preparations for subsequent launches, while the catch tower awaits the return of vehicles. In addition to these infrastructure enhancements, SpaceX plans to establish on-site facilities for propellant generation and storage, air separation units to produce liquid oxygen and nitrogen on-site, and a deluge system for the launch pad in the coming months. The company is currently targeting late 2025 for Starship launches from Pad 39A. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Virgin Galactic successfully completed its 12th and final commercial flight of the VSS Unity spaceplane on June 8, carrying four customers, along with its two pilots into space. The VSS Unity spaceplane, attached to the VMS EVE mothership aircraft, took off from Spaceport America on June 8 for the mission dubbed Galactic 07. Among the passengers were Turkish research astronaut Tuva Adesiver and three private astronauts. At roughly 13.7 km altitude, EVE released Unity, and the spacecraft fired up its hybrid rocket engine to ascend into suborbital space. The vehicle reached a peak altitude of 87.5 km, and the passengers experienced a brief period of weightlessness and a view of their home planet against a backdrop of space. The mission was notable for its scientific payload from Purdue University and the University of California. These experiments focused on studying propellant slush in the fuel tanks of maneuvering spacecraft and testing new 3D printing technology in zero gravity. Additionally, the crew carried headgear equipped with brain activity monitoring sensors and two insulin pens to assess their functionality in microgravity. After a brief trip to suborbital space, VSS Unity successfully returned to Earth, executing a runway landing at Spaceport America. This marked the completion of its seventh commercial spaceflight and the twelfth crewed spaceflight overall. Since its inception in 2016, VSS Unity has undertaken a total of 32 flights, including early test missions. The final flight of VSS Unity marked a significant chapter in Virgin Galactic's history and paved the way for the rollout of the next-generation Delta-class spaceships, which will further expand the company's capabilities and offerings in the space tourism industry. Virgin Galactic is currently focusing on the development and production of these new vessels. The Delta class is designed to be manufactured in a modular fashion, which allows for faster production and lower costs. The vehicle will look exactly the same as Unity, but will be built of different composite materials and manufacturing techniques to enable high production rates and lower costs. These new spacecrafts are expected to fly at least twice a week, eight times more frequently than VSS Unity, and will accommodate six passengers, a notable increase from Unity's four-passenger capacity. The ticket price for seats on these new vessels is set at $600,000, reflecting an increase of about $150,000 from the price of VSS Unity. Virgin Galactic plans to initiate flight tests for the Delta-class vehicles in late 2025, with the goal of commencing commercial operations in 2026. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.